Welcome to another episode of the Meal Prep Monday podcast. I'm your host and founder of Prep Dish, Allison Shaw. Today we are wrapping up our mini series on planning, and I'm going to talk about how I use Google Calendar to plan out my weeks with my husband. Before we get into the episode, I want to read from a subscriber who says, I just wanted to express my appreciation for Prep Dish. My family is dairy, gluten, and soy-free, and your program has made our mealtime so much easier and healthier. My wife especially appreciates the dairy-free fudge as we haven't been able to find a suitable recipe for years. Thank you for sharing and glad to hear that your meal times are easier and healthier. I hope they're also a little bit tastier. They probably are with that fudge. Uh, if you have been wanting to try Prep Dish, this is a great time. We have an exclusive offer for podcast listeners. It's two weeks free. I feel like two weeks is just a good amount of time to try it out. You can pick out two different meal plans, give them a try, search through our archives, see what we're all about. That's at prepdish.com slash MPM short for Meal Prep Monday. It's always linked in the show notes as well, but you can just head there and give it a try for two weeks, see how it works for you and your family. Okay, so wrapping up our little mini series on planning. If you've missed the last few episodes, last week I talked more about the paper planner that I used. I might get into a little more of the paper planner today, like how I kind of go, like look at my calendar and then transfer that onto the paper planner. And then the week before, had an interview with Sarah Hart Unger of Best Laid Plans. So if you are very much into all this planning stuff, uh, her podcast is a great one to check out. And yeah, today I'm going to talk more about Google Calendar. Because when I look at planning and figuring out my week, making sure everything goes smoothly, I feel like with each kid, it's a lot more balancing that needs to happen each time you add a kid because there's just so many more schedules to accommodate on a week-to-week basis. And one of the tools that my husband and I have found invaluable to making sure the week goes smoothly is using Google Calendar. And we use it a little differently. So my husband has a lot more work calls than I do. <laughs> and his he puts every little thing on his calendar. I actually do not like to have Like a lot of my tasks for the day, I don't always assign, like do like they call it time blocking. I'm more, I like to have my top three tasks for the day. I talked about that last week in the planner episode. I kind of like to write out, hey, here's the three things that need to happen. But I don't always assign times partly because, you know, as a mom, I'm not always able to commit to certain times. Sometimes I do have time blocks, but with a newborn, things can come up. So I'm usually more like, hey, I have a general idea of when I'm going to work, but I have my top three written out, so I more know what needs to happen versus the times. That being said, my husband's calendar, I have access to it, which is great. So if that way I ever have questions on timing or like, you know, if he has a late work call that it's going to run into dinner or something like that, like I can always pull up his calendar to see that. Or if we need to schedule like a call together, an appointment together, I can kind of get an idea of his calendar. So it's nice to have access to it. And with Google Calendar, so for example, you know, I just pulled up my Google Calendar to look at it and I'm not seeing his calendar right now. Like there's a little check box where I can open and close his. So I don't have his open on my screen unless I have a question about his schedule, which is awesome because his calendar is very overwhelming for me. (laughs) It gives me a lot of anxiety to look at, but it's nice that I do have access if I need to see it. And he actually has, so he has his work calendar. He has a personal calendar. And the other thing that he's linked, and I haven't done it because it's usually shared with him, but he's linked his calendar through TripIt. So he books all of his travel through TripIt. And that's also been really nice because it automatically, I know Google will sometimes automatically pull flights if they're in your email and put them on your calendar, but with TripIt, it automatically pulls his whole trip. And so that's nice that if he's on a trip and I want to see a flight time or something, I can pull up that calendar. It's a whole separate calendar that just has all of the travel details. So that's also a great way to kind of communicate about the travel without having to text and be like, wait, which, you know, what time's your flight? What time are you getting in? And all of that, I can just kind of pull that open. So that's been really helpful. And then um, we together have a shared calendar that we put all of basically kids stuff or anything that's kind of a shared thing we put on there. And that one I usually do have pulled open day to day because it's usually things that, you know, I kind of need to know when I look at my calendar. 
And that's the one where he, if he does have like, I'm looking at here, like he has a retreat that he's going on. So that's on our shared calendar. So I can pull that up and be like, oh yeah, that's coming up in three weeks. And then I have my calendar, which I actually just use one calendar for my personal and work scheduled items. And I could see why it's helpful that he has personal and work. I know some people that do, but again, I prefer not to like over schedule my days with putting all of my tasks on my Google calendar. A lot of those are going into my paper calendar and just have a little bit more flexibility in the way I work. That's just, I work a little better that way, like writing it out by hand day to day versus like having the whole month planned out. And then I feel like it just ends up switching a lot. So any appointments or calls or anything like that are definitely going into my Google calendar, but then a lot else is going onto my paper calendar. Okay. So week to week, what we do is we do a weekly meeting on the weekend. It's it usually ends up being Sunday, sometimes Saturday, just whenever we can squeeze it in, we sit down, we pull up in our calendars, we look at what's going on. We, you know, figure out if there's anything we need to figure out with the boys appointments, drop off and pick up. We kind of get that all figured out. So right now we're back to having an au pair, which has been really helpful. Um, but with the au pair, we do a weekly or sometimes, you know, two weeks at a We'll give her like maybe two weeks of her schedule, but each week we're having to look and kind of figure out her schedule. And so we're sitting down, we're looking at our calendars, looking at her schedule, also fitting in a date night. We try and do those most weeks. And, you know, we've had times where it's kind of been like, okay, the date night is this day and this time. But right now it's easier for us to just look at the week and figure out what's going to be best um, to kind of shift around hours to make that happen. So um, that's something we're squeezing in, but that works for us because we still are kind of able to, to make that work. And, you know, just looking at that, we're really looking at that week ahead in depth. And then after we figure that out, we usually try and then go on the next week, look at it just to see if there's anything that we need to know about, especially childcare needs or something like that, or, um, a day that they're going to be off. And then, I also then try to kind of open it up and just be like, okay, is there anything new that came up for the next month or two to three months that I need to know about that I need to plan around in terms of, you know, like travel or something going on at the school or something that something that I would need to know more details to figure out in advance. Um, sometimes looking at anything past the week doesn't happen just because, you know, on the weekends, it's usually, you know, we're trying to fit this in with the kids playing and doing all that. So as much as we try to kind of start with the week, you start granular and then get a little more big picture. Some weeks it's like, we just kind of get the bare minimum done and we plan out the week ahead, but it's super helpful. And just, like I said, having everything on the calendar and knowing that my husband is a very like by the calendar person, like if it's on the calendar, he's not going to forget it's going to happen is really helpful because it just helps us to kind of communicate through the week by having these shared calendars and knowing that nothing's going to fall through the cracks because we both definitely look at them on a, I was going to say on a daily basis, but he probably has his pulled up like every hour. <laughs> so that's a way that we make sure everything's going to happen. And then just kind of a quick overview of then what I do. So, you know, we have that meeting where we look at the Google calendar and then from there, I'm usually transferring some of that to my paper planner. Like I like to then have it put onto my, my paper planner. Like I'm not adding anything to my schedule a month in advance. Like I'm not saying, oh, I have a dentist appointment in three weeks. I'm putting it on my paper planner, anything like that. It lives on my Google calendar. Anything that's an appointment or a scheduled timing thing is on my calendar, but then kind of either day to day or week to week, when I look at my paper planner and what I have coming up, I'll kind of jot down just a rough outline of, of my schedule onto there, just so that when I'm kind of planning out my priorities and tasks for the day, I know what the schedule looks like. So it's sort of this like combination of, you know, the, the things that need to live and have a specific time are there on that calendar. And I use it all the time, but then that paper planner is really helpful for me just planning out my days, if that makes sense. So that's how we're planning those out. Um, the other big planning thing that happens is kind of that au pair schedule. And some weeks it's very much just like copy and paste, same as the week before. But oftentimes, as I'm sure those of you with kids know, it changes like drastically <laughs> week to week. And that's all done on a Google sheet. If you guys want an episode that goes more into depth on how I do that, I can. I don't know how helpful that is because I, I don't know how many people are in a 
situation of, you know, needing to switch up childcare hours week to week, but that's something we just kind of have gotten really used to doing. So yeah, that's how we use Google Calendar. We also, I was going to touch on Trello. I think I've touched on Trello in past episodes, um, but Trello is another, that's more of a, we use that more to keep track of tasks and things that we have going on. So I can do an episode on that sometime in the future. And, you know, maybe I've already done that. So that might not be necessary, but um, Google Calendar, if it's not something you're using, like, or some sort of shared calendar with your spouse, for us, that's kind of like probably the number one way that we make sure the weeks go smoothly and nothing falls through the cracks. So hopefully you find this helpful. If you have any feedback, I'd love to hear from you. I will link our Facebook group and Instagram in the show notes. Feel free to reach out. This is wrapping up our series on planning. Next week, we start our little mini series on home management. I'm really looking forward to that. The interview, it's a book that I read last year and reached out and the author was happy to come on as a guest. So I'm really looking forward to diving into that content with you for the month of March. And another quick reminder that if you have not tried out Prep Dish, we have a two-week free trial. If you are looking to get healthy, tasty meals on the table, but you want to do it in a way where you just got it, right? Like you don't have to think about it. Your meal prep's been done. You can easily kind of have the kids in the kitchen and just know what you're doing and it's stress-free. It makes for a very calm evening as much as possible. And yeah, if you want to try that out, it's prepdish.com slash MPM. Uh, It's a two-week free trial there. That's all I have for this week. I will be back again next week with another episode.